The Science of Toxic Relationship Addiction, How to Break the Cycle, Why Are So Many People Addicted to Toxic Relationships, Proverbs 4-7 states, and With All Thy Getting Get Understanding. This session will bring forth a scientific and spiritual understanding of why and how many individuals become attracted to and addicted to toxic relationships and how to break the cycle. When I say toxic, I mean relationships of the following nature. Habitual disrespect and intimidation. Ongoing abuse, physical, sexual, mental, financial, etc. Infidelity. When the love is not mutual, and not reciprocated. Relationship of convenience. Why do these types of relationships stay together like crazy glue? If they do break up, both parties often find themselves in yet another toxic relationship. Most importantly, why do so many enter and stay in these types of relationships in the first place? Wouldn't there be enough warning signs from the start to deter these individuals from engaging in these unhealthy unions? To explain this phenomenon, we must understand that humans have three components, spirit, soul, and body. We will also address the chemicals and the biology of the body, which work in tandem with the brain's neurotransmitters. What the brain perceives as real affects the soul. The soul is comprised of the mind, emotions, and will. The spirit component in humans was initially placed in the heart for the purpose of communicating with God. When Adam and Eve sinned, that spirit within died, and the spirit of sin and death entered in. In this world now, a human either has a spirit of sin or has been born again with the spirit of Christ living in them, which I will go into more detail about momentarily. The spirit within a human is what influences the soul to act good or bad. A born-again individual is one who has a new spirit after they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This renewed individual has the spirit of Christ, which influences their soul and body to do good things, according to Christ's teachings. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 This is why a Christian is referred to as being part of the body of Christ, because they do the works of Christ in their body, compelled through the Christ Spirit within them. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. 1 Corinthians 12.27 At the other end of the spectrum, humans, by default, because of Adam and Eve's fallen nature, are inherently born with a spirit of sin. Humans come out of the womb with a sinful nature. The spirit of sin influences the soul through the soul's components of the mind, emotions, and will to think, feel, and commit sin. This is the nature of Satan. This is why we must be born again with a new spirit. Through accepting God's free gift of mercy and grace, of Christ dying for the sins we have committed, we can be saved from God's wrath and obtain our eternal residence in the kingdom of heaven. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. John 3.36 A toxic relationship starts with a series of thoughts from the kingdom of darkness, which develops into a distorted fantasy about an individual to which the person is attracted to. After continuous meditation of fantasy role-playing within their mind, compounded by a lustful desire, it ignites the brain's chemicals of dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins from the neurotransmitters, creating a blissful sensation that compels the individual into an addictive, insatiable cycle. The more they meditate in this cycle, the more detailed and real their fantasies become, cultivating an insatiable desire and yearning for the targeted individual. This is what fuels the entertainment industry's fan base. The industry props up an attractive entertainer about whom it has scripted a fantasy image and reinforces this image to the public through the subject's performance in their field, such as music, sports, movies, magazines, social media, etc. 
This creates a fantasy life of its own, building a fanatical fan base, thus the word fan. This is Satan's large-scale technique, yet the same concept is scaled down and customized to humanity individually. This imaginary fantasy role-playing of the individual conjures up a falsified, perfected image of the targeted individual, creating a make-believe character they believe is real and is vitally needed for their life for them to be happy and fulfilled. They have intoxicated themselves with the chemicals of dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins through the cognitive fantasy cycle. It replicates the same illicit high as the utilization of illicit street drugs such as cocaine. The same chemicals are released from the neurotransmitters in the brain as when an individual abuses such drugs as crack, meth, and marijuana. This cognitive intoxication has individuals deceived into believing a big lie, which they feel is reality when it is all a satanic fantasy. The term, big lie, is attributed to Adolf Hitler, referenced in his book, Mein Kampf, regarding the effectiveness of repeating a lie until it is believed to be true. This term refers to a propaganda technique that involves telling a colossal falsehood that is so outrageous that people cannot fathom that someone could distort the truth in such a manner. If a lie is repeated frequently enough, the masses can accept it as truth. So, when the mind believes it is true, people begin to act like it's true, leading to irrational relationships and behavior. This is why God's Word tells us, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5 Now, if these fantasy relationships progress to the dating phase, the cognitive intoxication escalates drastically in that touching, caressing, and kissing increases the chemical release of dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins at an uncontrollable, toxic level to the point where the individuals become so intoxicated that they are oblivious to the red flags or toxic character traits of their counterpart, even as they are firsthand witnessing toxic communication and behaviors. This is because the euphoric feelings to their body that the chemicals are bringing disables their judgment of common sense and leads them more into the addictive cycle of maintaining and increasing the physical and mental sensation of the toxic relationship. Even after coming down to reality from the intoxication via an argument, betrayal, or assault, instead of attempting to resolve or leave the toxic situation, they instead choose to place a chemical band-aid on the situation by engaging back into the insanity of the lust, which reignites the euphoric physical and mental sensations, again creating a delusional metaphorical band-aid. The truth is, they are addicts through a toxic cognitive thought cycle, scripted by the kingdom of darkness. This is why God's word warns in Proverbs 5.8 not to go near the tempter's house, for the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger, and thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Proverbs 5, 3 to 11. There is a scientific law called quantum entanglement. It is a phenomenon in quantum physics where two or more particles become interconnected so that the state of one particle cannot be described independently of the other, even when large distances separate them. When a person dwells in another's presence and begins interacting, their energy and particles are mixed or entangled. When they leave each other's presence, their energy field, along with each other's particles, which have been entangled, stays connected electromagnetically 24-7. 
This means they are now connected with each other's energy field and have a connection to each other cognitively and intuitively through each other's electrical nervous systems, like two hand radios transmitting to one another. To illustrate, when you think about calling a friend, suddenly that friend you were about to call calls you and you say to them, I was just about to call you. That's quantum entanglement. Subconsciously, you were both connected and both responded intuitively through quantum entanglement connection. So when quantum entanglement enters the relationship equation, the relational bond becomes stronger and even more addictive, making it nearly impossible to see the clear truth of the relationship. God's word addresses quantum entanglement. To be entangled means to be yoked together. God's word tells us not to be unequally yoked to one another. 2 Corinthians 6.14, meaning a Christian believer should not be in a close relationship with a non-believer. God's word reiterates this in 1 Corinthians 15.33, stating, Be not be deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. To be entangled with bad company in a toxic relationship can put an individual in a constant state of intoxication. An intoxicated person doesn't see clearly and their judgment is distorted. This is why God's word tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, 8. It's godly wisdom to have God's truth in our relationships. When we have the armor of God, we have the belt of truth. Only God's truth will set a person free from a toxic relationship. God's word tells us, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8.32 Be diligent in seeking God's truth through reading His Word, the Holy Bible, and prayer. The Holy Spirit will guide you from toxic relationships and negative thought cycles into righteous thought meditation, manifesting relationships of Christ's truth and love. The following is a biblical guide to discovering God's truth and direction for your life by connecting to your spirit within your physical heart. 1. Find a quiet place. 2. Begin to thank, praise, and worship God for who He is and all He has done. Thanking, telling God how grateful you are for all He has done and is doing in your life, for your food, home, health, family, employment, etc. Praise, praising God for who He is, he is good, faithful, loving, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, etc. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalm 104. Thanking and praising God can be fast-paced. When you enter into worship, reverently slow down the pace, focusing on God's goodness. Worship. Tell God how much you love Him and appreciate Him. Sing a song to God and raise your hands up to Him in admiration. 3. Now, be still and get quiet before the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46.10 Put your hand over your heart to bring your attention away from your head brain to your heart, which is the center point of the Spirit's region, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love. Ephesians 3.17 Now, breathe in slowly, counting to four slowly. Hold for four slow seconds, and breathe out slowly for four seconds. When breathing in, imagine the air coming into your heart. When breathing out, imagine the air blowing out of your heart. 4. Wait patiently as the Holy Spirit establishes your thoughts and desires. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts will be established. Proverbs 16.3 Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Psalm 37.4 Meaning, God will give you a desire for what to do, and a desire for what not to do. During this process, you must ensure your heart is clean from any sin, unforgiveness, and cares of the world in order to clearly discern from God. When God communicates to you, He will confirm His thoughts by bringing you peace, 
often followed by a desire, inner joy, and unwavering faith. 5. Write down, implement, and obey what God has instructed you. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Habakkuk 2.2. 2. This has been Brother Ray. God Are bless. you experiencing voices in your head, sleep paralysis, fits of uncontrollable anger, constant nightmares, overwhelming fear, anxiety, and panic attacks? If so, good news, you're in the right place. God wants you and your family free. Look, demons are real. They're on assignment to cause sicknesses, violence, crime, tragedies, mental illnesses, and even premature death. This book, Demon Mentality Exposed, will give you a deep understanding of the diabolical mentality of demons through the narrative of an experienced demon deliverance minister. Evangelist Rayford Johnson is a retired correctional counselor and author who counsels and ministers healing and demon deliverance at correctional facilities, the streets, online, YouTube, phone prayer line, conferences, and residential settings. Learn how to safeguard yourself and your loved ones from demonic oppression, possession, and curses through the power contained in God's Word, the Holy Bible. As we bring you a collection of powerful and anointed biblical messages, life-changing self-help books, and testimonials right at your fingertips. We kindly invite you to leave book reviews throughout your reading and listening. Your feedback helps us improve and continue to provide quality content to our listeners and readers. If you believe in our mission to reach out to those in need, please consider making a donation to support our outreach ministry. Your generosity helps us get ministry books into the hands of those in prisons and treatment centers and allows us to cover the expenses necessary to continue producing free content resources for the public online, giving hope and inspiration to those who need it most. So what are you waiting for? Visit thugexposed.org, quote S online audiobook library today and join our community of readers making a difference. God bless you.